for all of you who do pediatrics, I'm sure in some of you in your adult practice will see hips which, are, which cannot be salvaged quite well. So the younger they are, probably you may have to give them a choice of different options. And I'm going to talk on my own practice and sort of when we started it 20, 21 years ago, and then a little bit of its evolution. So my indication is mainly, this is a clinical classification for painless unstable hip with LLD, a painful unstable hip with LLD, or a painful or painless stiff hip with LLD, poor posture and gait. So I'll show you quickly some examples. They all varied etiologies. For those who come from lemic countries, this is uh, infection when you are an infant, where the whole femoral head disappears and it is named as Tom Smith arthritis of infancy. So this one usually is a painless, unstable, hypermobile hip and a good one for actually a pelvic support osteotomy. This is uh, a multiply operated DDH, which has failed and the hip is migrated very high and is uh, unstable, also painful. We get sometimes in the teenage age group, atypical avian, I don't like to call it as Perthes disease because they don't follow any of the stages and they have severe condolysis and stiffness. And this is another one where usually after intervention, post-Sufi avian, condolysis and pseudoarthrosis. In this example, it's a painful stiff hip with pseudomobility at the non-union site at the physis and poor gait. So the problems, therefore, are pain, unstable Trendelenburg gait, uncanely stiff hip gait, all depends on what the uh, hip is. True and apparent LLD, difficulty in doing certain activities, aesthetic or cosmetic concerns, and long-term sequelae because of this problem. If you go through literature, there are a variety of uh, reconstructive procedures from uh, uh, arthrodesis, which I rarely do now, and I think uh, Alex had mentioned that earlier. Uh, there are so many other arthroplasties, as you can see, and finally, totally arthroplasty. And I've put the three together, pelvic support osteotomy, which then was modified to the Elizar of hip reconstruction, and we published a further paper about the pelvic support hip reconstruction with internal devices. There's good literature to say if you do a hip arthrodesis by age 35, 60% of them have disabling back and ipsilateral knee pain. Colonna arthroplasty, possibly unpredictable, but more recently, Gans has done some work on it. He's modified on it. He doesn't have a long-term uh, results as yet. Uh, as per Choi from Korea, trochanic arthroplasties are generally not successful. And I've seen them done elsewhere, very poorly, sort of poor result. Hair replacement arthroplasty, as you all know, has have its own problems. It's very interesting to look at the history of this technique. As long as 1917, uh, Lawrence, subsequently Juan Bayer, and probably Chance is the one who possibly uh, chose the correct site. Osteotium at the Ischium, and Milch in 1947 popularized the concept, and even he said at that time, valgus with caution. And Haas 1951 outlined the history and recommended this distal osteotomy. The classic Milch bachelor procedure, most of you may have done in the Lemic countries, is where you resect the femoral head and do an angulation osteotomies. It's a very good procedure also in poliomyelitis. I was trained with polio back home uh, many years ago. So what did Ilizarov do? He modified it. He added a second distal osteotomy for varization and lengthening. He added extension to valgus for the simple reason when you walk in stance, the leg has to lock or the hip has to lock, otherwise you buckle. So if you don't give that extension, your gait will again look ungainly. So it also address length axis and reduce the fixed pelvic obliquity and knee valgus. Like everything else in uh, orthopedics, you have to establish the cause, you have to establish where the pain comes, is it from fatigue from the biomechanical point of view or is it arthritic, intraarticular? The physical signs, of course, Trendelenburg, uh, if there is free AD duction, you have to reveal contractures and so on, block test. We have done a few uh, gait analysis, could not publish it. Uh, it does reduce stance time, asymmetry, and decrease GRF. So the biomechanical principles is to produce a proximal valgus, which lateralizes and distalizes the trochanter, thereby improving the lever arm and biomechanics. It tenses the slack abductors. 
creates a new medial fulcrum and medializes, medialization reduces the abductor forces needed to balance a weight in single leg stance. Extension locks the pelvis in stance and therefore again maintains the abductor mechanics. And the length equalization prevents further pelvic drop because many of them when you have LLD will have a combination of Trendlenburg and a short limb gait. Planning is based on a variety of things apart from your clinical examination. You do standing mechanical axis blocks with including pelvis. But the most important, if there is free adduction, we always do a single leg stance, x-ray as you can see, and you can calculate the adduction angle there and then see how much of it has to be corrected and add the valgus. The osteotomy level is spread from the maximum adduction view at the site of the ischium. The extension osteotomy, generally where they are hypermobile, I add about 20 degrees, but if they have an FFD, I would have released everything or resected the head and then you decide. At all times when you do this, you have to keep the limb more in internal rotation because irrespective, they tend to externally rotate. Over the years, surgical technique has changed. Initially, pure elizar of construct. Subsequently, the deck support came. It became a bit easier. So proximal elizar of distal hex support. You can do single or two-stage. I moved from single stage to two-stage. That is resection, ang uh, angulation first, followed by lengthening subsequently, especially when we started the internal fixation devices. And of course, the hardware quite a bit changed, cannulated, non-cannulated pins, HA coated, uh, accurately placing the pin insertion sites. And generally, even after you do this, you, you may need two lengthenings. For those of you who want to read more on the accurate indications and preoperative planning, uh, Durai Nayagam has published this nicely, very pictorial, in Strategies uh, in 2008. Just to show you an uh, example in theater where you assess the contractures. This was a child with, uh, you can see there, severe uh, avascular necrosis of the femoral head, almost stiff, uh, came from elsewhere. We resected the femoral head. And then you've, uh, originally I should do both stages together. I'll tell you why later we stage them a little bit. So you can see the first uh, pin in maximum adduction. And if you draw a line, uh, right angles to the long axis, and you add a little bit of valgus. So original description by Draw Paley, he said 15 degrees, but I've moved away from that. I'll tell you why subsequently. And then we use the Russian uh, Ilizarov arches or the Italian arches. And then once you have done the first pin, you, you mount the other pins to your first arch, you straighten the leg, and then your next pins are going to be orthogonal to your, uh, to your femur. So you can see this here, uh, as you can see, this is the drill bit, the osteotomy is at the level of the ischium. In maximum adduction there we have done the proximal construct and the middle construct, and then you gradually, in theater sort of, slowly you acutely uh, do the osteotomy, valgarize, and then you connect all of it, as you have seen here, uh, with rods, and if you have to put hinges here and there, possibly you may have to use that. And then we do the distal construct. So as you can see, this is a hexapod here with a distal construct. This is for the distal osteotomy. I don't do the distal osteotomy anymore distal because in future, if they want a total knee replacement, then it becomes difficult for that surgeon. So I try to do a mid diaphyseal osteotomy. And as you can see, this is how it looked like. And the most important picture you can see is the extension, which you can see in this lateral view. They need a lot of rehab, as this girl put in a lot of effort. She did uh, quite well. I think she's something like a, uh, works in a swimming pool as one of those swimming uh, instructors or guards. And there she is. Yeah, another few examples for you. I make them walk straight away, full weight bearing. So treatment protocol is painful, stiff hip with LLD, the classic milch bachelor procedure where you resect the femoral head with a modified PSO, a proximal valgus extension osteotomy akin to the original shans or has with femoral lengthening. When it is painful and mobile, the same plus or minus femoral head resection and the painless unstable hip with LLD is the modified pelvic support. This is an example of a boy who actually had Tom Smith arthritis of infancy. His gait was so severe that I had to do, is the first one why I did him a little bit younger, with fully consenting that we may have to revise him later on. As you can see, a strongly positive Trendlenburg. You can see the single leg stance. You draw your lines, you can calculate that angle. 
And then you do, this was the original construct uh, with classical Israf. He also had infection and shortening of the opposite leg. So I was young that time, so I put, uh, I could do more, more, more time spending putting frames on. I don't do that anymore. But anyway, so he went on to have uh, that same standing finally and lying down. And uh, I had to revise him later on. At the other side, we have to derotate him because of his uh, infective abnormalities. That was his final axis view. And then at follow-up, you can see the pre-op Trendelenburg and the pelvis at post-op. And interestingly, one day he came and said, I have pain in my hip. I said, what were you doing? He said he was doing long jump at school. So you don't necessarily have to have a, a femoral head, I would think. And more recently, he's come and shown me his first child. Okay, so this is another example, multiply operator DDH. He is some assistant manager with a football team doing quite well. He invited me for his wedding as well. And so a variety of examples, I'm not going to go through all of them. This one, as you can see, if you distill varization, if you distill one of my original ones, you will reveal a Trendelenburg again. So distal varization, you have to be careful how much you're going to do it because it will reveal or take away your abduction and give back adduction. That's the same patient with condolysis. So this one, finally, they, if you do, when you do it younger, they remodel. So you will have to revise, and usually revise with plates. One of the complications I had was heterotopic ossification, referred actually from Wrightington, multiply operated elsewhere, and they decided not to do a total hip. Uh, I did this and later realized uh, developed HO. Since then, I actually started to do sec two stages, do the first part, give them indomethacin for two weeks, and then later on at six weeks, do the second part of the operation. So it's evolution, uh, as you see complications. I routinely use to cast sprays after removal of the frames. So some practical tips, two-stage procedure for resection angulation. Be, be beware of the distal varization, reveals adduction, and therefore produces a pelvic drop. I usually ask the patient to judge the end of distraction rather than looking at the mechanical axis view. Patients need to be very well prepared. I always send them for a second opinion before I do a pelvic support osteotomy to an adult arthroplasty surgeon. So, and I document that letter inside. And younger children, of course, need revision. Lots of literature, I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, Mehmet Kokchoglu from uh, Turkey, all these series were neglected DDH, whereas Choi, which is the best group, a uh, big cohort, post-infective etiol etiology, and he said that the IHR was better than trochanteric arthroplasty. And there are many more. Inan from Istanbul also published uh, with using a monolateral. He still had five out of 11 at positive Tendlenburg sign. And of course, Rosebrook with Dropelli published the first eight patients with post-infective sequelae. Actually, if you see Professor Hosni, had published uh, uh, originally in, in the Egyptian Journal of Orthopedics. More recently, is published in the Elizabeth Journal, 136 cases, reasonably successful results, 21-year follow-up, with no conversion to arthroplasty uh, until then. Though I think later is another published a case report where I think he had converted one, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So with the Sheffield S. Vigiris, we have roughly similar results. And some of them will have a persistent Tendlenburg gait. The level of osteotomy best done at HKL level, and distal osteotomy mid diaph still for obvious reasons, which I mentioned. And according to me, it's not the deformity lines that are important, it's what the patient feels right. And therefore, slight abduction, not as described originally at 15 degrees at, uh, at the hip. And this was also mentioned by Haas many, many years ago. No doubt, the traditional is of a hip reconstruction. It choose everything what we want. Stability, it negates Tendlenburg gait, which is ungainly, improves hip biomechanics, and achieves range of motion and length. However, compliance is a problem when you have pins and wires, especially going through muscles, and acceptance. Pain, infection, joint stiffness, aesthetic issues, psychological issues, because most of these are teenagers. So what's changed my practice? We moved to a new building, so I thought we need to have a new technique. So we published this paper in Strategies, uh, where I thought maybe we should move on and combine the two and use all the uh, internal devices, because by then the precise nail had arrived. So we published that with my initial eight cases, and we staged them. The, the proximal part is done as one single procedure with two incisions if you have to resect. 
And I use the recon 3.5 Establa recon plates because you can bend them in two planes. The first plate on the lateral side is a C plate because that can fit nicely for the extension and then you can give valgus. But because it's a weak plate, I then put an anterior symphysis pubis plate or another plate to neutralize it because they can easily fracture. Remember, these are not supposed to be used in fractures anymore uh, with the recent MHRA regulation. And between two to six weeks later, then you use a distal retrograde lengthening nail for LLD. <coughs> so these were the eight patients. I'm not gonna go through all the results. You can see that in the paper. And the same, you can see the radiological uh, pictures again to show extension and valgus. And then we do the retrograde internal lengthening nail. Not necessarily you need uh, polar screws uh, every time unless you go distal. So this is one good example there. A latency anywhere between five to 10 days depending on the pathology and age of the child. This is the original precise. That was my first girl whom I had done. And then you can see in more recent times since the precise nail has been withdrawn, I've been using the fit bone nail as you can see. Of course, this was, I didn't have the one with the example for it, so I didn't put the hip here. So just to show you, uh, the, we have done about 14 fit bones now, uh, not just for PSOs, for others as well. And we usually remove the implants after one year, provided all the cortices are well formed. In the final clinical assessment, we didn't have any poor results. Uh, we had two fair, but still there were two where had positive Trendlenburg and valgus. The complications, as you can see, one had an implant failure with no detriment at the osteotomy site, as you can see, and one which went into a bit more valgus. So we got some more uh, sort of ideas for how to avoid this. And since reverse planning came, we have moved on to reverse planning after that. And so thereby you can translate and preempt your deformity. This is just to show all the publications and just to show all the complications from the literature review. Uh, of course, these are early days for the internal fixation devices, as you can see. And uh, you can compare this about knee stiffness, uh, especially with the internal devices. We didn't have any, whereas we did have with the external fixators. You can see that frame time almost on an average of all of us between uh, five to you know uh, six months, six or seven months. Um, and the length gain, you can see the difference in all of them. So technique and evolution, uh, reverse planning uh, is something now we use more and more for so that the axis is still nice and straight, better aesthetic results with low complications rates. The early results, and we have published two or three publications now, and encourage, is encouraging and cost effective. This was published uh, recently in International Orthopedics, Quality of Life of Children During Osteogenesis, comparing intramedullary lengthening nails and external fixators, which were possibly the patients preferred more than the fixators. Just a quick example of a long series. To, this is a patient underwent PSO in 2005 for a Sufi with severe AV, avascular necrosis. Uh, she, she was overweight even then. She became an adult, discharged her. She went to another center. She fractured a petal at some point. Though she didn't have pain, she was not happy with the gait. So one of the colleagues in Leeds uh, went ahead and did the uh, uh, re-osteotomize and did a hip replacement. Uh, originally, the, there was a paper published by Shilton Wolf. You can convert these later, but of course, probably by uh, trained revision hip surgeons. And she went on to heal quite well. So she's still doing well, but she's 110 kilograms. Just to finish, this girl uh, is almost now, I think, 13 to 14 years of follow-up. Uh, she was working on a cruise ship almost for 11 years. She came to see me, and uh, she's doing quite well. At, at the moment, she's also asking for a total hip, just to let you know it's possible. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>